So I reviewed the Samsung Galaxy A20 a few weeks back and in my review, I said it had some things going for it. An AMOLED screen, Dolby Atmos feature and a really long battery life. And some of you in the comment section here and on social media were like, I should review the A50 and the A30. But I thought to myself, why not even give you an honest review on its much bigger brother instead? So I got myself the Samsung Galaxy A70 with my own money and everything you're going to be hearing here on this review are my own opinion and my thoughts, not influenced in any way by any brand or corporation. So sit back, relax, and let's get into this review. So first things first, this device will set you back in the region of about 120,000 Naira. That's about $330. It's got the same design language as the A30, 20, and 50. It's brought in a plastic back that looks and feels like glass. I got the white variant here and it looks quite good with the contrast between the white back and the black um, screen. The device feels good without the case and it just looks damn nice. I mean. I think Samsung did a really good job with the design here. Now you've got very thin bezels around the sides of the screen with the larger bezel on the bottom, but it's not that large truly. It's really very tiny. This thing looks gorgeous and I wish I didn't have to use a case on it, but thankfully the case included by Samsung is transparent and allows the beauty of the device shine through. Now, Samsung's One UI scan on Android 9 Pie runs very smoothly on this device. Although I've always said that there is something about the One UI scan that I don't enjoy aesthetically. I mean, it's fluid, it's got rounded corners and it's got some things going for it, but it just feels incomplete. I mean, there are some things that bother me so much that makes me not want to use One UI. And I'm just gonna highlight a few of those things. One, for instance, is in the notification. Now, when you turn on dark mode on this device and you get notifications from YouTube, YouTube notifications come up as white against other dark notifications on this thing. And it's just absolutely mind boggling. I mean, I can't, I can't unsee it. It disturbs me so much. Look, I will always say this. Xiaomi has nailed what Android should look and feel like. Everything in Xiaomi's MIUI is clean, smooth. I don't know what the Xiaomi MIUI team did, but that Android skin just works. MIUI is the only Android skin I've used that I haven't had to install a third-party launcher or a third-party icon pack over. I've had my Mi 8 for more than a year and I have not for once installed a third-party launcher over it. Meanwhile, I've had this for about four or five days now and I've already installed the Pocophone launcher over it. That's to tell you how bad I feel about Samsung's One UI. MIUI just works. It works the way Apple's iOS works and Samsung should take a cue from Xiaomi and see what Xiaomi is doing right and implement it on their devices as well. Now, the Samsung Galaxy A17, in my opinion, is a better deal than the Samsung Galaxy S10 family. Why? Well, let me explain. First, you're getting almost everything you're getting with the S10 family functionality-wise. I mean, practically everything. You get an always-on display, an in-display fingerprint scanner, although it's a different tech from what you have in the S10, but who the heck cares about that? I mean, they do basically the same thing. No regular person out there cares about the engineering behind it. Everybody just wants it to work. And I have to speak my mind on this in-display fingerprint thing. Now, it's a very cool tech, I like it, but I just feel like it's more inconvenient using my phone right now than having that fingerprint scanner behind. Whoever thought of this fingerprint scanner thing behind was genius. With a rare fingerprint scanner, you just pick it up and your finger is there naturally, boom, it's open and you're in your phone. I love that better than any in-display fingerprint tech you wanna put on any phone these days. Anyway, you get three lenses behind this phone. You have a wide angle, you have a regular lens, and you have a third lens for depth sensing. Same as you have on Samsung Galaxy S10. And there are other things that you can find out about this device on your own. Secondly, why I feel this device is a much better deal than the Samsung Galaxy S10 is that you've got 
a bigger AMOLED screen in here. It's a much bigger AMOLED screen. It's 1080p and it's super sharp. You've also got a much bigger and better battery life on the A70. Look, when it comes to phones that we use on a daily, the fact that it's a 2K or 4K screen doesn't flip in matter. Nobody cares about that. The A70 has a 6.7 inch 1080p Super AMOLED screen that's freaking amazing. Images look good and paired with that 4,500 mAh battery, this thing has got the best screen on time I've ever used on a smartphone. A freaking 10 hours of screen on time and approximately a day and a half of battery life. Some of you out there may want to attack me and say, hey, the Samsung Galaxy S10 has got a better screen. Please, what else do you do with your smartphone besides watching video content and browsing the same apps that you've got on every single phone in the world? I mean, you're basically going to be using Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, etc., etc. Does seeing those apps on a 2K screen make any difference over viewing it on a 1080p screen? Nope, it doesn't. What I'm trying to say here is that you've got a beautiful big Super AMOLED screen with great viewing angles on the Samsung Galaxy A70 and it's got really impressive color representation. It's simply great. Thirdly, this phone has got a plastic build. Yeah, I know. So let me throw this question out there and please I'd like you to answer it honestly in the comment section. Would you pay $330 for the Samsung Galaxy A70 that wouldn't shatter when it drops or would you pay $990 for the S10 that will shatter to smithereens if you were to make the mistake of heating the cold hard floor. Your guess is as good as mine. As for specs, you're quite safe here. You've got a device with very decent specs. It packs a Snapdragon 675 processor with an Adreno 612 GPU. You've got 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, which is expandable to 512GB using a micro SD card slot. You've got a 6.7 inch Super AMOLED display with 393 ppi for those who care about those numbers. And powering things here is a 4,500 mAh battery which supports fast charging at 25 watts. And luckily for us, we also have the 25 watt charger included in the box. Even the S10 does not have this. There's a 3.5 mm earphone port, a USB-C charging port, downfiring loudspeakers and in-display fingerprint scanner. In the box, you've also got the USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Now, I was able to go from 20% to 100% in about 50 minutes. That's, I gained 80% of battery life in just 50 minutes of charge. I haven't had a chance to deplete the battery on this device, so I can approximate that it'll take about an hour and 20 minutes to fully charge this device from zero to 100. Let's talk about the cameras on the Samsung Galaxy A70. And just like the Galaxy A50, the A70 has a triple camera setup on its back, but featuring a much larger sensor. Now the five megapixel camera module at the back of this device cannot be used to take any picture. It's used for depth sensing, so you can use it for the live focus feature in Samsung's camera. Now the camera app on this device is very much the same as what you have on any current Samsung smartphone only with more icons in the viewfinder to control which camera is being used. Now the icon with three threes means you can use the ultra wide camera while the icon with two threes denotes the regular camera. But how do these cameras actually perform? So the photos are a bit soft but the processing tries to compensate for that softness with sharpening and this works to some extent but it isn't always very great. Colors turn up very accurate, contrast is very good and dynamic range was fairly good as well. The ultra wide camera produces heavily distorted 8 megapixel images as there is no distortion correction applied on the images you take with the wide angle lens. Now this is hardly an issue as the purpose of the wide angle snapper is to fit in as much as possible into a 4 by 3 aspect ratio image. Overall, the images you get on this device should be enjoyed for what they are exaggerated perspective shots, I mean really vibrant colors and just overall great for posting 
on social media. I'm going to be doing a dedicated camera review, so stay tuned for that video as well. Selfies were mostly okay, the photos were decent. I mean, if you have plenty of light, you can get some really detailed shots. I mean, colors are spot on as well. And you also have the option to shoot a wide angle selfie. I'll also have more on the selfie camera in my camera review. So in conclusion, although I'm not a fan of Samsung's One UI, I've been generally impressed by this device and absolutely believe that this is a smartphone you can be comfortable with for the next year or two. Build quality is good, phone is smooth and everything just works fine. Should you buy this device though? Well, yes, if you're on a budget and yes, if you're not on a budget. Why? Because it's an absolutely good deal for you either way. Get the Galaxy A70 and use the cash saves for a weekend getaway to one of the many red sorts around your area or heck, even buy two Galaxy A70s, one for you and one for your partner or use the extra cash and visit a really good restaurant around your area and enjoy yourself. Either way, you don't lose anything. This phone gives you a flagship touch for a fraction of the price. I'll always still use flagship devices mostly because I need the speed but for most of you out there who watch these review videos and who change your smartphone once every two years or more, this is an absolute steal. I hope this video was worth your time and I hope this review helps you make a decision on if this phone is for you or not. Samsung makes really good phones and this is one of them. And with the A-series smartphones out there for 2019, they're quite impressive. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up or if you loved it, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button. Follow me on social media for more news and flash reviews and to know what I do when I'm not here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.